Hello, my name is Jimmy Rose. I'm from a local TV station in uh, Sweden, around 160 kilometers north of Stockholm. With me is Lina Messager and our computer man for the day, Jan Peter Eriksson, who's also been the editor of editing uh, the reportages we're about to show you soon. How do we get, how do we get newly arrived immigrants to Sweden to watch our news. That's the subject for this short seminar. Uh, I'm sorry if I have to use the paper, but I'm a little nervous, you know how it is. 2015 was the year when migration, when migration uh, to Europe and to our country, Sweden, increased to an extent not seen before. The situation in the Middle East had deteriorated to the point that hundreds of thousands of people chose to, at the risk of their own safety, to leave their homes in search for a new life. Many of them came to Sweden. During 2015, a grand total of 160,000 people applied for asylum in Sweden, comparing to the 80,000 the year before. Most of them came during the fall of last year, when the migration crisis in Europe was a fact. We have all reported about this, or seen reports about everyone this has affected. Without actually being able to predict the situation in the fall of 2015, the heads of my company, Swedish Television, made a strategic decision the year before. The ever-increasing portion of the population that did not consist of native Swedes meant a different demand on us as a public service organization with a mission and duty to mirror all of Sweden in its own. The strategic decision was to change how we report in the future. In short, it meant in Sweden today about 24% of the population has at least one parent born outside of the Nordic countries or are themselves born outside of the Nordic countries. For our company, SVT, the employees of SVT, the corresponding number is approximately 9%. The gap between these two numbers has to change if we aspire to be a TV channel and a news broadcaster for everyone. As I said, that was the strategic decision to change these numbers, change this gap. As such, it became my task, as the head of a local TV station, to hire somebody with a different background compared to the reporters we already had. We wanted to meet all new Swedes and needed to acquire, not least, a new language to the office. That was the beginning of the process and the story we're about to share with you now. So allow me to once again introduce a dear colleague of mine, Prize-winning journalist Lina Abusari. Uh, I believe it's important to tell you about how everything started and how come I started working at the Swedish television and what I feel that we have accomplished. <coughs> so I remember sitting on the couch at my parents' house. And my father told me that SVT were searching for an employee. So he asked me if I had applied for the job. And I said, no. And I got angry, because why would I? <laughs> uh, I had already applied for at least 50 jobs within the journalistic industry. And I don't really know if that is the case, but I'm, I have a Palestinian background. And I felt like my background has <coughs> been a deciding factor why I have been denied some of these job opportunities. I had decided to change direction in life and start a master course in human rights. Um, but I decided to call Yimi anyway, just to ask him one question and about what he had written in the ad. He had written something about diversity. He wanted to increase the diversity. So what was diversity for him? because I have experienced that many news agents write that in their ads, but no one really lives up to that. 
uh, anyhow, Jimmy answers me, and he says that he, he's searching for someone that masters another language and is capable of communicating with people they usually aren't able to communicate with. So I basically told him, well, I'm the one you're searching for because <laughs> I am the reporter that can speak Arabic. And that leads to a job interview and to where we stand today. So I you can say that I'm very thankful that I called him that day. <laughs> Not uh, as grateful as I am. Uh, it was a long process that uh, finally came to close when Lena stepped into the office as an employee in October last year. And now we just, or just, we just have to make sure to get something out from actually have an Arabic speaking reporter and a colleague. My plans for how we were going to go in that matter were extremely vague at that moment, I can tell you. I was mostly thinking about internal training. Alina is an educated journalist, but was new in the TV business. So cameras, uh, computers, editing, and so on. That was on the top of my mind. And in the same time, the world was in one of our times worst migration disasters, when hundreds of thousands of people left their homes for Europe. So only a few weeks after that I started working, we decided to get in touch with people we usually don't get in touch with, uh, people that had escaped our country. Men när resten av familjen 
Ungern kom fram till Ungern så kom Silans öde att förändras. Många flyktingar skulle snabbt försöka komma med smugglarbussen som skulle ta dem vidare. Det var stressigt och trångt. Hela Silans familj kom med bussen. Själv blev hon kvar. Och en kort stund därefter blev hon och andra flyktingar gripna av polisen. Hon är en person som är en person som är en person som är en person som احنا كما شفنا انه نحن لازم نقدم اللجوء عنده ليش انه عم نمر من عنده انه عم نقدم اللجوء لهنيك ودخلنا على الحبس يعني كنا جروب كثير كبير كنا تقريبا 50 شخص وكما شفنا وحطونا بالحبس قالوا لنا اذا ما بصمتوا بدكم تدخلوا على حبس ثلاث اشهر وبعدين رح نرجعكم على سوريا فعشان هيك انت بصمتي؟ ايه كلهم بصموا فقمت انا كمان بصمت ما في حل تاني كيف كانت المعامل هناك؟ يعني ضلينا خمس ايام بالحبس يعني باليوم بيعطونا وجبة خبز لوحدة صمن صمن صغير لحال وحدة وكاس يعني ما ما بمكتب شرب وكان في عندي بالحنفية يعني ما كان يتشرب بزور بالشرب او الاولاد يبكوا ما في حليب كنا نطلب الحليب ما يعطوا På Migrationsverket medger man att det råder en restriktiv flyktingpolitik i Ungern. Ett EU-land får inte ha systematiska brister och de måste uppfylla grundläggande krav vad gäller behandlingen av flyktingar och asylsökande. Men frågan är om Ungern lever upp till de här kraven. Vi har inte lägger något i takt att det är jobbar om, men det är inte annat ut Varför vill du inte åka tillbaka och få din asylansökan prövad där? Jag är inte kul att nåt. Och när jag träffade dem där på hälsan, jag såg att de var mycket mer lika än de andra. 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 إذا أروح برجع على سوريا. ما بتجيب دين فاميل في دين. كل حياتي هن هن الأهل وكل شيء يعني. من كان يرى فرملة أمضان تابي دابلين آردن. من دي يلا بعون مدر آبرم أول. Däremot så kan det göra sundantag för vuxna när det råder speciella omständigheter. Alla kan jag inte kommentera just det enskilda ärendet, men jag kan säga att det finns en bestämmelse som handlar just om det här där man ska titta på, på, där man kan titta på till exempel hälsotillstånd eller familjeakryptning. Men där det ofta då rör sig om humanitära aspekter och det är det som har utvecklats i praxis och det är det som ligger hos sagt om hållet i till Ingår den psykiska ohälsan i det här? Ja, när man, när man tittar på, på de här kriterierna, då, är, då finner man ju rätt på eh, detta. Det är inte bara fysisk ohälsa, utan då är det även psykisk ohälsa som, som är relevant. Jag ser inte riktigt ut av det, och det är den för det på något sätt, det är den som kommer att samla för det. Jag tar att jag ser mig i det här tonet, och jag tar ut det här tonet. Det är inte en av de som är här. السلام على الله ان شاء الله Till integration i samhälle är språket och det är många som flyr till Sverige just nu och det innebär att du är en och henne ska jag få träffa nu. Det var för ett år sedan som Israel Faris kom till Sverige och för fyra månader sedan fick hon uppehållstillstånd. Fortfarande blev hon kvar på asylboendet i Sandviken och hennes största önskan är att få börja plugga på SFI 
svenska förintandrare. Men hon har fått besked från Arbetsförmedlingen att det inte är möjligt. Hon måste först hitta ett eget boende och registrera sig i en kommun innan hon får ingå i en etableringsplan hos Arbetsförmedlingen. Och i den planen ingår studier på SFI. Arabic. 
We found them partly through a series of reportages we told you about. I also believe that we managed to broadcast a more nuanced picture of the people behind all the numbers to our traditional audience. I hope we have done that. We have done follow-ups on some of the stories we told in the fall. We have met the people again and we have broadcasted new reportages. We competed with this that you've seen at Zircon, that's why we're here today. And we worked hard through our websites and social media to reach out with our work. You may recall that in the beginning I was mostly focused on the practical introduction when Lena came to our local TV station. That time is over now. Today, we stand firm together. I'm the head of the station, and Lena is the reporter. Yes, and it gives us a lot of opportunities, me being a reporter that can speak Arabic. Besides the series about the refugees we've made, I've used the Arabic language in regular news reports. I have, for instance, made an interview with the author and human rights activist and soon I'm also going to meet the Syrian poet Abunis. And right now I actually work with another of our local TV stations where we are reviewing the conditions refugees live under uh, in the refugee accommodations. And I think that all of this is really cool. <laughs> The third and last reportage in our series is about Mohammed and his family. It serves to summarize what all this really is about. To leave your country in uncertainty and to find a new start in life. And when you watch this, keep an eye on Mohammed's eye. I'm not going to be able to do it. 
صورت محمد كنت مبسوطة كتير يعني نسيت نسيت هاي السنة ونص تقريبا اللي ضلينا بعد نسيتها فجأة لأنه كنت مرتاحة كتير إنه الشعور الوحيد اللي كان فيه إنه أنا مبسوطة إنه صرت مع زوجي وخلص ما بدي أتذكر أي شيء تاني من ديرا الصور فرج قال تسبر تراومات السيارات وبلي رد ضغطها رستار كايوت صوم نادام سوكر انسات سبور تليكي تسير انهاي من ساتسي نصبور اي غينا ستون فيس كاموني تهولا ينتورنا دوني تانكن اوت فاش كيلون سيانا ستفيرا اوران اي سيريا وقت دخل باش عدد بارد اي اسوء بحلو يعني انت يمكن ما بتفكري بحالك لما بيكون عندك بيبي ما بتفكري بحالك قد ما بتفكري فيه انه هذا الولد راح ابوه ومشان المستقبل تاني له ونحن قاعدين بالمنطقه دخلت فيها داعش انه هذا الولد شو بده يشوف وكيف بتشوفي في المستقبل هلا؟ هلا انا حاسه انه هون في كثير شيء حلو الي ولابني ولزوجي لانه يعني فيك تقولي انه هلا بلشت بحياتك أكيد مستوى راح يكون كتير كويس كتير مني بس بدون ما ترجع بلدي لأرجع بلدك يعني مش حاسس إنه السويد بلدك؟ السويد أكيد بلدي وأنت مثلي كتير كتير وأنا تشوفيني أخدم السويد بخدم السويد بس واحد بحلم لبلد الأم دائما 